Mind you, we swore an oath of loyalty, but the rest is deceptive. It's not more speeches in the Senate that will change the world. Rome is dying. My legions are mustering as swiftly as possible. Senators, welcome back to episode 17 of my Stellaris Roman Empire campaign. In the last episode, we largely spent our time recovering our economy after the Vazarin raid on Elysium. Now the planet's pretty much back to its full strength and producing a large amount of alloys. We've used those alloys to construct our newest fleet, a corvette fleet designed to raid the Nerilga Swarm and lend support to our main fleet wherever it can. In regards to anomalies, we have our scientist, the Exile, working hard to figure out what's in the basement of a bunker on the Astonine homeworld to give us clues as to how the orbitable habitat came to be. And we're also uncovering some ruins in the Brigantium system. So right now we're in the midst of planning our military campaign against the Nerilga. Soon, when our fleets are together, we can kind of plan out our full invasion. They're just recruiting at the moment here on Terra and at Sol. And then we're going to push them far east, all the way over to Ashimax, and get ready for a full-scale invasion. We might have a scientist up there at the same time, and that allows us to get some debris, level them up, and also explore any wormholes and any other anomalies that we may end up coming across. Uh, so I'm pretty excited for that, because we haven't had a war in quite a long time. We've just been raided and uh, embarrassed, frankly. So it's good to be able to be on the offensive. So if we were to have a look here at what they're at, they're at equivalent, pathetic, and inferior. These guys are a hive mind. There is no negotiating with them. They are a devouring swarm. They're not actually at war with anyone else, though the Kozier Trade League has appeared on their east, so we might see them kind of taking over more territories and eventually going toe-to-toe -to -toe with their borders, and we want to be the ones to get this war in first so we get the territory rather than someone like the Kozier grabbing it, as when you do go to war, you start eating their territory in real time. No claims necessary against the hive mind. Uh, so in between episodes, I didn't really do too much else from where we left off last time, just kind of made sure we had stuff running pretty well on planets and no major problems. I got a planetary shield generator I'm creating now on Terra. So on Terra, we used to have two exotic refineries, or we currently do, and I saw that we have a lot of exotic gases, so I decided to get rid of one of these and put down a planetary shield generator immediately, uh, as I have a feeling that people are probably calling for that. And as I said, once we start getting some extra build slots on these other worlds, we'll start doing the same. Uh, so yeah, let's let time play. And uh, the other, oh yeah, the other thing is we got one of our scientists back after he kind of uh, fled from the Ether Drake. So I just sent him again back into another system out this way. So he's in transit, did another experimental subspace jump. He's the first one to have ever done that. So it's kind of interesting just to see from the point of view that we know how to do that now. Uh, at least with small craft. Oh yeah, and speaking of crafts, I had a look through some of our designs and things like that. Didn't change anything too radically, but I did design out a basic cruiser. So I actually kitted it out with um, the large crystal shard thrower. So we saw that that was kind of what I was most intrigued about with research in the last episode. This kind of new weapon type that I hadn't seen before. So it does extra shield damage, does extra hull damage. So I was just quite interested to stack it on the ship and see how it performs. You can see the gun there right on the front of it. Uh, and now I've queued it up with some fusion missiles and UV, small UV lasers. So basically the lasers are complementing the armor or hitting the armor. And the fusion missiles are doing shield penetration and hull damage as is this. So I think this is a decent little build. It's, it's pretty balanced between the two. The only thing is like this is quite far range. So is this. Whereas these need to be get you a little bit up close, so I've just let them use the default stance and go pretty close, it's fine. I did fit it with a fire control system, which gives an increased fire rate and ship weapons damage. And I actually did something really similar with the Equites, which is our point defense uh, destroyer that we just have a few of. And the idea of this is that it'll, it'll kind of go and deal with uh, star bases and kind of mitigate the missiles that come out of the star bases by just having an absolute ton 
You can see all the little guns placed around it of point defenses. So I saw that we have a MA or S weapon system, which allows us to equip, uh, increase our point defense firing rate and point defense damage. And of course, this is our point defense destroyer stern and bow. Bow? I always say bow. Um, <laughs> that we've equipped on this ship. So it's a dedicated, specific ship built for point defense that's now enhanced for point defenses that hopefully we can get some better technology eventually as well. Uh, so hopefully they'll just blast all sort of missiles away, clearing the, clearing the way for the rest of our fleet. All right, so there's been a war. It's between the Order of Enlightenment and the Valon cluster. So that's the Valon out here and the Order. We've seen these guys go to war before, I think. It's quite interesting just to see territories change around if, if we've ever really noticed that before. A few times we have seen pockets of territory swap hands. Uh, if it wasn't mistaken, it looks like obviously that the Order of Enlightenment at some point had been at war with the remnants of Alaria. And the Dagatani Kingdom, of course, lost to the Kosher Trade League. I should really... Like, I remember all these names. So hopefully you guys do too as well. But the Order of Enlightenment are basically the mega church that are sort of seeming like scammers of some sort. I don't think they necessarily believe in their own religion that they're selling to people. Then we have the remnants of Alaria that live on a ring world that were like basically just genetically modified and traumatized. And then we have the Dagatani Kingdom who are Bandit Kingdom. Phelon Cluster are the guys that live on habitats and they're sort of uh, socialist, I guess. So yeah, actually it's pretty interesting. I think the Thogren... They're also socialists, so the two socialists starting right next to each other. Nice ideals between those two. They should be allies. In fact, let's just check, are they? Uh, they are. <laughs> that's that's really awesome. Um, so yeah, they're in a federation together called the Interstellar League. Alright, it's just kind of cool to check that out. Alright, let's let time play and continue with the invasion, or at least the preparations for the invasion under Empress Appia III Caesar. Got so many little extra things now. Damage to the ether drake, curator insights, relic activation cooldown. Xenophiles are being suppressed. Excellent. In fact, speaking of, we can maybe run some extra campaigns, can we? A fear campaign, monthly unity, xenophobic ethics attraction increased. Which I actually think would be nice. Considering I think they are amongst the largest. They are. But they also produce, yeah, four out of seven. Not bad. What else could we do to make them? No immigration. Assert your dominance. Declare war against one or more Xeno empires. We'll cure these guys. They'll like that. And uh, a giant massacre. Putting any one of the gargantuan Le Leviathan Xenos out of their misery will please these guys. So yeah, I like the, the Xenophobe party. Just in terms of how we can please them. They've, they've got simple ideals. The same goes for the authoritarians. They haven't actually gotten any more complicated either. So the fact that 40 pops are belonging to them. It's generating a nice amount of influence. Um, the ones we want to repress really will be the Xeno Reform League. And possibly the Sacrevir. Just because we haven't really hit them for all they need. Sacrevir aren't too bad. But the Xeno Reform League. I really need to rename that. I keep forgetting about that. Uh, they're actually not even producing any influence whatsoever. So let's do, uh, yeah, let's do a fear campaign. Sounds lovely. The violent, beastly nature of the Xeno must be communicated to our people. They must accept the truth that we stand alone in the sea of alien filth. An education campaign, leader experience gain. You can only do one. <laughs> we'll do the fear campaign. Just for the ethics. Now, it's debatable whether Empress Appius Caesar III has infiltrated the Xenophile party. She's suppressing it under her own rule, and now she's running fear campaigns. I like to think so. I don't like to subscribe to this notion in the comments of her being some sort of pacifist. We have no indication that that's the case, um, other than that she is leading that party. But I think it's a political ploy, a tactical maneuver on her part in order to crush that political party from within. Online. Who are the, what are they going to say? No, you can't be our party leader. Uh, a vassalization request. The Kosher Trade League and the Dawenu Trade Commission. Now, I thought they were already vassalized. So, apologies, I'm not sure what's changed, but I'm pretty sure they were released a while back and then they were vassalized. Maybe they were liberated or something since then. Because, yeah, there's been new peace found with Dagateni Kingdom yet again. So, it looks like, actually, so yeah, what happened in that war? Kosher Trade League gained one system, 
but the Dagatani Kingdom, who were the defenders, gained two. So yeah, it looks like Dagatani gained a little bit of territory. Not the best war for the Kozure. Fleets are all equivalent. Just kind of curious to check that out. All right, so we can start, excuse me, commissioning the upgrades of our ships out here. So that's 773 alloys for classes one. Still need to come up with an interesting name. These are the guys that, ultimately it's a kind of catch-all fleet. I don't know if we necessarily named them after the fact that they defeated the Tyrenes, but maybe. Uh, oh, right, nice. We have our, oh, damn. I, I said I was gonna look up what these did. And as soon as the end of this episode ended, I was like, oh, what was I supposed to look up? So I'm just going to write this one down. Bear with me. Next episode, I got to see what all the Giga Structural, or Giga Structural Engineering projects do. So I'm just going to write down in my notebook, Mega Structure. Uh, research, let's say. And then I'll, I'll know what that means. <laughs> I hope. All right, cool. Got my little notepad here because you guys write such intricate comments and I have to remember so many different things. Um, I just write down some bullet points and stuff. All right, so cool. Well, either way, research speed five. Uh, max minerals is being increased now up to 22,000, so that's nice. And we can build a new mega structure. So that what we can actually do is actually just test it out and see what it would give us, I think. Uh, we can get X-ray lasers as weapons. Survey speed increase. It's kind of a nice quick one to get. Just That's kind of also pointless. Let's do... I think subspace sensors, and we can have a black hole observatory. You know what, I suppose weapons, if we're gearing up for a fight, let's go. Let's do that. And let's just commission the upgrades. Oh, we've already done that, cool. Hang on one sec, am I running something? No. Sometimes I think that when my frame rate's bad for a second, I might be running uh, something, but I guess not. Sometimes it just goes bad. All right, um, scientist the exile still working away. I can't believe it. He is 98th. Wow, wow, what a hero! I hope he gets the job done. Hope he gets to see New it out. Technology discovered. Two more techs finished. Living crystal trading. So crystal farmers are now also going to produce trade value. Uh, interestingly, about that, I guess we could just check actually on the planet. So on the planet Rhea. We have the crystal miner jobs, and now they're producing just one trade value, but that's all right. It means that it's actually quite interesting considering our policy. One trade value is now equal to 0.5 consumer goods and 0.5 energy. So now we're turning what's effectively a half of a consumer good into the alloys and into the uh, crystals as well as obviously four minerals. So it's just kind of an interesting, like we're after cutting off the, uh, because of our current trade policy, we're after like reducing the consumer goods spend on that really. Uh, more than anything. All right, hydroponics farms on star bases, industrial subsidies, artisan output has increased, forge subsidies, metallurgists. So these are all edicts, right? Yes, it says it right there. I'm an idiot. Ministry of production. That's actually quite good. Uh, a building that will then buff all the metallurgists or artisans on a planet. Perfect for the planets of Cicero and Elysium. So we'll look into developing that, but. It's going to be a little while yet. Slave processing facilities as well. That's going to what? Reduce the political power further of slaves and also increase their output. Yep. Let's go with that. Seeing as we're getting so many now. Plasteel armor. Going to go with that. I would like the Ripper autocannon. I'd also like the star base. But Plasteel armor. We're a bit behind on the armor tech. So let's catch that up. All right. How's our fleet doing? I think it's all put together now. 20 ships. A modest... Uh, A modest 2k strength. We'll just upgrade them right now. Incoming transmission. It's taking really long with that. Why is that? None of them are moving. Oh, we're building a colony ship. That's why. All right, we'll just get going then. Just get going to Trab. You can upgrade there. Incoming request, migration treaty from the Tyrene. Hmm, foreshadowing the vote. I, I don't know the results of the vote yet. The Senate are in session behind the scenes, debating whether or not we annex these guys, integrate them. 
And that will also determine whether or not we make them slaves. I'm just going to say no for now. Uh, the other thing I did look at between episodes was regarding what you can do. Oh my god, we got one of the Zebadragon from Alaria. feel pretty bad keeping them as slaves, to be quite frank, but there you go. So you go to slavery type, and you can change it to indentured servitude. This means they will work specialist jobs. And we were debating doing this for the Tyrene, because uh, the Tyrene are a little bit better than us at technology. Um, but they're only like 2.5% good. You know, it's like their, their increase is like a really, really small amount. So happiness being a slave is negative 20%. So I wonder who's better. Like, is a human better on... Would a human be better on research, not having a happiness debuff? Or would all the happiness debuffs from the Haitian of the Tyrene affect things? Happiness doesn't isn't one-to-one -one with pop output. It goes into planet stability. So if you keep stability high, their happiness doesn't actually affect their output, I think. I'm 90% sure on that. So it could work. It could work. We could end up still getting a lot out of them. If I decide to go that route and give them... We could always just change the type of slavery back anyway, if it wasn't working. Oh shit, the Traxian Empire declared the Nor uh, Norilga Swarm as their empire, uh, rival. Speaking of, do we have them as a rival still? Yes. Okay. That rivalry gives us 0.50 influence. We're going to be removing that if we end up taking them out. Right, we need a scientist out here. This is going to be a new scientist. Uh, it's going to be Drusus Secundius. Oh, we don't have enough energy. Okay. Energy is quite low. Something I'm going to do, actually, is just set up some monthly trades here. So we're going to sell minerals, I don't know, 30. Pretty standard amount per month. And we're also going to sell food. Uh, 30 per month. Because we just have so much. Uh, that we should just try to make a little bit extra energy. Energy is falling down quite a lot, actually. So I'm a bit concerned about that. Grunier Prime as a colony. Uh, it's got an unemployed pop. So speaking of energy, let's get some generator districts on the move. This has a planetary shield. There's still fr two free jobs here, so we're not going to build anything just yet. All right, great. So where's the fleet? That's the patrol. It does take a while to get where we're going. We do have hyperdrive three. We do have second level ion thrusters now. So we're not too slow. Not as slow as we used to be, anyway. We've come a long way in our 86 years. Fleet upgrades applied to the main fleet. Which is now at 5.8k strength. So not bad. It can be upgraded again. Because we just got some extra stuff. But I'll wait. I'm not going to wait. keep wasting alloys like that. The other thing we can start investing in, I actually never did, is just some basic uh, defense platforms. So, yeah, maybe let's just get a couple of these on the go. Could throw in some crystal shard throwers. Hang on, just clear this whole thing. Let's design it. So that's lasers and then coil guns. They complement each other for damage and stuff. Auto cannons and then crystal shard throwers. Let's try that. And then just auto complete the rest. It's fine. This is just called the plumbata at the moment. But yeah, let's maybe just make one or two of these just to see. So 456 alloys is actually quite a lot. And it actually costs us our rare crystals as well. So we obviously do have some. Again, though, can't see it. Don't know where that is. Um, so, kind of weird. I mean, that seems really weird. Am I, I wonder, am I missing a mod or something that's going to show me? Lacking alloys. I wonder... Yeah, I don't know. Alright, we'll just build one. Anyway, so the Ashmanax, Ashmax system has 3.8k starbase here already, which is already a nice little starbase to fall back to. We'll see how much a de uh, defense station adds to it. We got our slave processing facility done. We're going to go with farming subsidies. And the food processing facilities. Let's do that as a building. So that's food processing. Improved food processing techniques will lead to better preservation methods and less spoilage. So yeah, our bread baskets, Gaia and Rhea, um, 
are producing a lot. This makes 132 food, and Rhea makes 112 from our Titanic life hunting and things like that. So these places are always just going to be pretty amazing for food in the long run, I think. We've got unemployment on Terra. Uh, we actually have a unemployed specialist pop. Oh, right. Um, maybe we could just... Oh, yeah, that's because we just changed the building into a planetary shield generator. So maybe we'll move these guys to... Yeah, perfect. Let's move them to Elysium. And they should have a job right away. Great. So they immediately get put on... Or they should have, if they, if they weren't already, being put on merchants. There we go. Warning. Active war zone in proximity. Uh, what do we have? Pop Privateers declared war on the Veldenor Zealots. Oh shit. So we read about the Pop Privateers last episode, a sort of militaristic megacorp, sort of. Um, and then we have the Veldenor Zealots. Essentially authoritarian xenophobic militarists. <laughs> And it looks like, yeah, they got, they're the defender in this war, encroaching on each other's space. We'll have to see who comes out of that one. Let's see, is there any sort of alliances or anything going on? Doesn't look like it from their perspective, and neither from theirs. Alright, our fleet, fleet, <clears throat> excuse me, is at Capella. A few more systems to jump as we get make our way over to the Nerilga. We have our Plasteel armor now ready to go. Railguns. Oh no, Plasma Thrusters. We want speed. That's what we want. Speed. Tempting for the missiles and all of that, but we just want the speed, I think. God, yeah, we need more and more alloys all the time to upgrade these guys. New technology discovered. So it went up to, from what was it, 3.8 to 4.3? Not bad. 0.4, like half, 500 um, firepower? Not bad for one defense station. You can probably see it there. Yeah, there it is. Just one little defense platform, nothing crazy. Um, but this is the choke point system if we were to keep falling back, if we have issues. Uh, regenerative hull tissue. What did we just get? We just got the... Wow, that was so fast. I mean, these are really quick tanks. Some of them are very, very, very cheap. Yeah, let's keep doing that. Let's keep getting these cheap ones. So tile blockers again. System scan Not complete. Gonna, wow, our energy is so high. Oh, yeah, we just did the monthly trades. My God, I'm, a, I have, I'm an idiot. New technology discovered. All right. Archaeological site pending. The resource cache. Oh, nice. The homeworld of Asenine. So, the Exile discovered an ancient cache of resources amongst the runes on Astania. They are even, uh, they are even now in the process of being shipped to our central stores. 200 alloys. I'll take it. Alright, but it's still ongoing though. It's just something he found while he was working. I can't believe... I've, he's gonna die, I just know it. Now, speaking of cache, on Augusta, we have a cache here that needs to be researched. And it takes three months to complete. So, we just found something while looking around on Augusta full of ancient alien texts. So let's research it. 90 days, let's figure out what's going on. We have a fleet here, so if something happens, we should be pretty prepared. Uh, records discover this is in the ruins on Colonia Brigantium, or in the same system. More details have been assembled from the scattered records we have recovered as an ever-increasing percentage of planetary resources. Uh, sorry, an, sorry, as an ever-increasing percentage of planetary resources were poured into anti-UFO measures without any noticeable success, their economy and society began to collapse. Now I'm just going to pause it there. Just to catch you up, this is the planet that seemed to be like afraid of aliens without really any proof. There was just like uh, UFO sightings, things like that. They felt like there was abductions, there was animal mutilations, and they started preparing. So that's that's what we're dealing with here. So I'll just read it again. More details have been assembled from the scattered records we have recovered. Um, as an ever-increasing percentage of planetary resources, <laughs> I read it wrong again, were poured into anti-UFO measures without any noticeable success, their economy and society began to collapse. Brownouts and food, what the hell is a brownout? And food shortages were endemic, most fields of technology stagnated, and a deep sense of hopelessness prevailed at every level of society. Scattered references have been found to have some kind, or to have been found to some kind of ultimate shield 
which became increasingly common as reports about the general situation on Colonia Bergantium 3 get worse. Scattered references have been found to some kind of ultimate shield. Okay. Well, just keep digging. We'll find out as we go. Our X-ray lasers have been finished. Um, what else could we get now? The energy nexus for any generator world's research station output. Let's do that. It's very cheap. It's literally, literally four months. Like, we are flying at technology right now. It's insane. Relic activation is available yet again. So, this is something I forgot to address in the last episode um, that I've learned. There's a passive effect and an active effect. Now, passive effects are just always passive. So, if you, if you just have the relic, it's passive. So, the pop growth speed, that's always active. And the sublight... Um, sorry, not the sublight. The army morale and the planet sensor range is just passive for this. So, that's basically... They've always been there. But I am still going to keep hitting this every time I can. Because we're getting Gaia worlds out of it. Which is just kind of amazing. So, let's keep going with that. Um, but I just wanted to address that. I didn't know that. I did think that it meant it was a passive effect after you activate it, if that made sense. I know I read it weird, but that's what I thought. All right, we're activating it again. Now, the planet I was thinking of doing this on is actually the Tundra World out by Colonia Brigantium. Um, it's a 17 size, and the, planet, the other one we have out here is a 19 size. What else do we have around? 17... Yeah, so we're running, you know, there's not many left to go, really. But this is one of the biggest ones. And I think this would be kind of cool. I think a lot of people are calling for us to name some colonies Romulus and Ramus, considering that these are both going to be Gaia planets, one slightly, slightly bigger than the other. This is perfect. I think we're going to call this one Romulus and this one Ramus, as it's going to be just a teeny little bit smaller, uh, honoring those. All right, so the Britannia is going to head out to Brigantium. It's kind of funny. Uh, which is a colony ship I prepared earlier. <laughs> At the start of the episode, I started uh, making one. I actually prepared it in in uh, thinking that we're going to get to land on the orbital habitat out here. I don't know if I want to do that yet or not. There's just something about this that just has me irked. Just because it's different, really. Reactor district, research district, trade and leisure. It would be cool to have a massive trade complex. Considering this is in the middle of the Via Augusta. Kind of a nice little thing, maybe? Possibly. Alright, how are we doing? Where's our fleet now? It's on the way. Almost there. Alright, let's upgrade online. this ship one more time. This fleet. What are we researching right now? We're still getting some... Okay, when the plasma thrusters are done, then we go. So 11 months. Then we hit our upgrades, and then we push to the Norilga Swarm. What is this? Site 10667 override as a dash delayed claim to the Beta Kaeli system. Now we just we just got that, so that makes me think that they're like almost automatically doing it and saying like, look, we own this. Um, so let's have a look at what they've claimed so far. All of this, all the way out to Gargantua. Yeah, not happening, but uh, interesting. We can actually see their fleet. Level 2 out of its mind for a lot of stuff. Looks pretty cool, actually, their ships. Uh, they got the plantoid ones, I guess. So, yeah, lasers. L heavy on the lasers, so they're going to be doing more armor damage, which is actually pretty good against us, considering we've specced for more armor. But generally, these seem really weak. This is the Desi class, is it? And then they have the Myria class. So they got some point defenses of their own. Interesting. All right. Well, nothing too much to be concerned about. How big is how big are they in general? They are inferior fleet power now. Yeah, I don't know what happened to them. I wonder did their fleet get caught in one of the main raids because they didn't used to be like that. That seems quite low. They're not at war with anybody. If they go to war with me while I'm in the middle of this Norilga invasion, I'll be really annoyed. Research project concluded. Tales of Yore. Our translation team was able to find just how much information was found within the text found on Augusta. Find, found, found. Yeah, okay. The long defunct civilization, though it never let, left the late Iron Age, appears to have, have, have had a storied history, with the cache's contents including artifacts and even some heroes mentioned within the sagas. 
Uh, these sagas tell tales that took place over thousands of years and according to radiometric dating occurred hundreds of thousands of year to go, years ago before the sudden and mysterious disappearance of the civilization. Tales of great warriors, brilliant philosophers, and great glittering cities are all found within their leather bindings. Furthermore, expeditions to where the sagas say the great cities were uh, located has revealed ruins that were almost perfectly described by the maps. Already the colonists have begun to take more pride in their world, and the media is caught up in a frenzy of adapting the sagas into movies, books, virtual reality experiences, and even video games. A Total War Saga Augusta, they would call it. As for the planet itself, things are looking up. Let us praise their arcane spirituality. Let us praise their greatest warriors. Uh, governing ethics attraction. <laughs> Let's do that. Whoa. Alright, cool. How wholesome. Come on, man, finish that tech so we can get going. I'm a bit terrified, though, honestly. Oh, now they're inferior to me? What's happening? Is everyone just losing their fleets? So I didn't necessarily just build mine up like crazy or anything. I upgraded it slightly. All right, well, it looks like we might be ready then. Hmm. So for those who are interested, I'm playing on Admiral difficulty with scaling on. Just FYI. I'm hoping that we don't just encounter really small fleets all the time. And we do have certain amounts of challenge. I think it might just be coincidental. But like, I'm not like that good of a player. Like, I don't play this that often. So I felt like Admiral... I've never been able to beat Grand Admiral, for instance, right? So I felt, yeah, Admiral should be as challenging as I can go. Really. But it could be to do with the mods. We might have gotten some a bit of lucky with these guy worlds and things. I don't know. Hopefully it's not too easy in future anyway. We were evenly matched with the Tyrenes originally. Oh no, what's happened? No! Scientist the Exile has died at the age of 99. Ugh. A massive funeral will be held for him. He uncovered many an excavation. And it's just an interesting character, and then he just lived for so long as well. He's like an oldest scientist by far. Interesting dude. Um, we need someone else on this now then. But we need someone really good. But everyone's level one, so we're gonna have to take somebody off of research. We're gonna have to take Mayo. No, she's only level two. Marcellus or, or, or Sivius is at least level five, so we'll take him off engineering. Put someone else on engineering. There's nobody good for engineering though. Which is unfortunate. Uh, we'll just do somewhat long lifespan again. Drusus Secundius? Didn't we just get someone called with that name? Could have sworn we did. Hmm, strange. I could have sworn we did. Alright, anyways. Uh, let's get this person then on. Marcellus. And let him continue. Alright. The alloys have actually fallen down a bit. Oh yeah, that's because we just built up. New technology of discovered. Unemployment on Augusta. Unemployment on Colonia Thul. Spamming out the energy because of course as soon as we move our fleet out, we're gonna feel it. Proton launchers, zero point reactor. This is insane. I feel like we're getting this stuff so early. <laughs> I can't get over that. This is supposed to be like in another hundred years, I thought. Am I crazy? Especially zero point power. Wow. It's like I'm on times two tech rate, really. All right, well, let's just keep getting the small things. Energy from technicians. How's our tech doing for seven months to go? Seven months to go. Uh, you can upgrade now though. Actually, well, that's kind of a waste again. <laughs> yeah, they'll have to upgrade it anyway. That's a patrol fleet, is it? Yeah, that's the patrol. Doing their thing. That's pretty cool. Just tagging the base and then heading back. They probably need to upgrade as well, but that's fine. Diplomatic wait. So what did we just get? We got the clearing tile blocker thing. Diplomatic... Yeah, let's... The hydroponics, I mean, this is what? One month to do? Three months. Let's just do that. Hydroponics farming. All right. Fleet upgraded. All right, so they're upgraded as well. Let's just leave them there for now. 
Yeah, actually, before we do this upgrade of Colossus 1, we're going to have to send them back to the Trab system. Archaeological site pending on the ruins. Numerius Trebatius reports that a strange sickness has been spreading amongst the archaeologists on Colonia Brigantium III. Uh, the first confirmed cases appeared shortly after a sealed chamber was opened for the first time. With a large part of the team incapacitated, progress has been delayed. Well, that's, um, concerning, to say the least, but okay. No more about it, I suppose. Another one. The homeworld of the Astonine. The Traxian Empire is getting hit by a Vazarin raid right now. It's the Empire in the Southwest. Or southeast. Uh, treasure chamber. A hidden treasure chamber was recently uncovered by Marcellus or Sivius at the archaeological dig site on Astania. Although most of the found trinkets are of little practical use, they have substantial energy credit value. Nice. A thousand energy credits. I'll take it. Uh, then we can run the other edict campaign thing now. Education campaign. Leader experience gain. Go. Great. I'll put on one of my favorite tracks. This one was copyright claimed, which was fun last time, but uh, it should be all right in the future, hopefully. That's something I didn't mention, which I don't really want to go on about or talk about too much, but half of my episodes of this series have been copyright claimed. And while the claims are being disputed and they, a lot of them have been overturned, actually all of them will be eventually, I'm sure, but a lot of them already have been, um, basically means that the episodes are essentially demonetized for the first few days they're out um, which is really annoying because the, the music website I've gone for this time is different than the one I normally use and the one I normally use you, I've never been claimed from them like I pay for the license the music in this <laughs> and I, I love the music in this um, but I'm in talks with them about like why this keeps happening and stuff it's just a real shame anyway um, so it's just another point towards your support is greatly appreciated basically all right, so the reason I wanted to bring these guys in, that was so cool. When this came into the system, it like exploded in. Hang on, let's check that again. I think uh, Arx has been, I think that's how you say it, Arx Erin has been working on stuff like that. Uh, on her Twitter, you can see like all these VFX she's doing for these ships. And I, I don't know if it's updating as we speak, but I think so. New technology discovered. Right, they can stay in upgrade. We just got the upgrade, right? Nope, wrong one. We just halt that then until we're ready. Let's go into orbit. Let's check this out. Normal speed. Now, before we enter in, we're coming in here. I want to see what it looks like. Yes! That looks so cool. Really good job. That looks so cool. The kind of like white electricity kind of stuff. That looks so cool. Oh my god. It makes me want like more travel types in the game. I hate. I really did not like when they changed it to the Zony 1. I get it. And I don't want to go on about critiquing the game. I just want to play it. But I really wish there was more than one. I guess there is two. There's jump drives. Um... But yeah, that's really cool. That looked awesome. Uh, Hollow temples. Yeah, next level up of Hollow temples. Actually, let's go admin cap first for now. We're going to need it. We're, we can barely keep up with our own admin cap just for our pops growing right now, which is kind of crazy. Also, I forgot to actually uh, build these things. Let's do that. Man, I feel like we're getting close. No, we're not close to the end. We still have got plenty of time. All right, let's speed up time. I actually have to determine which one we're going to open up, which I didn't do. So Supremacy is going to exclude Compassion. Well, we can't use Compassion anyway. Supremacy is what I was thinking of because it's real military focused. Starbase capacity increased, army damage increased, ship fire rate and all that kind of stuff. Considering if we're going to be in a war, it might be worth it, especially if it takes a while. Um, culture and self-determination well, we can't do either of those either so we have to do domination as well so is that one we'd want not really it's gonna change that music sorry introspection yeah I think I think I'll do supremacy 
They could do supremacy. So, the future of this galaxy belongs to those who are strong enough to seize it. Excludes compassion, but we can't do that anyway because we're um, militarist. Awesome. Okay, cool. I love as well that it made a big noise when it came through. That's what caught my attention. I was like, what was that? That's so cool. Come on, how much time? Normally we're flying for tech. Let's finish this up. That's good. Now, is this going to be... Is the... Let's see. So some of these have level 3 on them and some don't. This is what I don't get. Oh, this wasn't on auto upgrade. I get it now. Perfect. All right, cool. Let's go. Let's upgrade. This is the final upgrade before we push out. There's only two shipyards, so it might take a while. But I plan on making two more, and then uh, if we need to reinforce the fleet, we can just spam them out. Energy credits from technicians has been increased. Quantum computation node. Oh, I forgot to look at what the mega structure thing is. Oh my god, so much stuff to do. Researchers turn consumer goods into research points for new technologies. This is insane, though. We've got so many different... I mean, there's 20,000. I'll leave it for now. Ah, let's get it. <laughs> 39 months, actually. That is a bit too long. That's a bit too long. What else we got? Energy credits again. Let's do that. Space torpedoes. Not just regular torpedoes, but space torpedoes. Let's go. Alright, the ships are upgrading. We can see the power of the fleet rises. Excellent. Getting a little bit hyped over here. What do we got going on in the galactic community? I meant to say, um, I switched around. Buzzword standardization was going to come up next, but I was supporting it, so I stopped supporting it, and I started supporting uh, the one that's on the center floor now, which is collective waste management. That's it. So this is going to... So I'm in favor of it. Is it winning? It is. Cool. Diplomatic weight from economy, 40%. So that's like really, really good. Worker pop resource output is increased. Alloys increased. Minerals increased. So this is the second tier for one of the uh, one of the policies. The next one is actually to relocate the galactic market. I'll be furiously opposing that because it's right next to us. Proximity doesn't matter, but if we do end up integrating these guys, we want to have it right next nearby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can see why they would propose that as well. Having it be belonging to the Tyrian Republic seems really weird. Okay, if we check as well, um, while well, that's going on behind us, sublight base ship speed is 50% when we put these things on it. Chance to evade is also increased, so this is going to be really good for us. We should just mop the floor with the Nerulga. And what I plan on doing is not even taking Kun V. I hope that we could it's a boundless ocean world we can consecrate it to one of the gods we've been very we haven't really been focusing on the gods too much in this playthrough uh, i want to be building more temples and really utilizing leveraging that kind of aspect of the roman empire we're doing a excavation out here i might just chill until that's finished so let's cancel that and just leave them to orbit for now all right how's the upgrade going still still going there's quite a lot to do. Until we finish this, I can get two more shipyards. It might go a bit faster. Fleet upgraded. These guys are done. Fleet upgrades applied. Oh, they're both done. That was fast. All right, cool. Here we go, then. Off to the Norilga territory. Who's leading it? Gaius Minacius, who defeated the pirates, I think, before. If I'm not mistaken. And Titus Ospius, brand new level one commander. So Gaius Manatius has seen a little bit of combat before. His traits are that he is, he is aggressive. Ship fire rate and sublight speed is increased. I'd love to see it. He might actually be more suited to that, actually thinking about it. But it's fine. It's fine. There's his fleet. So it seems like just the battleship has that, like, specifically cool... Why would that be? So maybe it's actually nothing to do with the machine ship set, ship set but... Arix Aaron, again, sorry if I'm saying that wrong. I really need to just write down the name. <laughs> uh, her ship said, she's been posting on Twitter, like, it looked like that. It looked like the very same thing. So, I did just realize, hey, she didn't design this ship, I don't think. So, it might have had nothing to do with her. 
But ultimately, oh wait, we just came in. It's actually a thing from when you come in, not when you leave. God, I should just shut up and just play the game and then New talk. Technology so uninformed, can't handle it. All right, well either way, we're ready to go. We've got some unemployment on this planet. Um, four, there's only 49 pops here, considering it's not that big. Uh, let's just do, uh, I don't know, more minerals then for now. It doesn't matter if they're on the job or not, just something to keep them busy. All right, so we have a combined total of about 7 point, sorry, uh, 12, 13 thousand fleet power. So let's get the entire fleet together. The only one left to upgrade. There is another upgrade. Three ships didn't upgrade. Okay, let's just finish them off. Uh, a couple of the, the destroyers. Uh, must have been just because we... Nope. Thought maybe we got something that was affecting it, but not at all. Construction online. All right, let's get the extra shipyards out there. Fleets enhanced. All right, great. We're good to go now. Let's get to Ashamax. Ashamax. Let's get uh, our Corvette raiding fleet to get ready and go up this way. There is actually star bases blocking us the whole way through so we might need to send in i don't want to necessarily just go with pure corvettes into star i mean it depends how big they are i guess 1.4k mm. system charted yeah i might send in the battleships and i really plan on the corvette thing just being used for systems without uh really without any defenses at all to be honest so we're gonna gather all these guys get up to Roden. Gonna go Rodin to Escont, down to Lazen, down to Usuldon, uh, down to Yon, and then down to Il E A, e uh, Y A. And that way we'll have taken out the three star bases out here, and we'll stay together for that. I think would be the right thing to do. <laughs> Try to not neglect my, like what's going on, like the planets, the Empire. <laughs> All right, we can get our planetary shield generator here now. Seemingly, we can get this everywhere. These cost five energy to upkeep, but it's kind of our mandate that we're going to protect these worlds. And we can actually upgrade these now. Nice. All right. That's that's planetary generators or shield generators on almost every world, just not the smallest ones. Space torpedoes unlocked. Uh, what else can we do? Destroyer hull points. All right, we're almost there. Actually, wait, we, we just stop here. All right, cool. What fleet am I missing? The battleship is obviously slow, so we'll have to online. probably send the battleship first and keep this one on it. And then the Corvette one on this. So in terms of escorting, that way you're leading with the slowest ship first. Alright, let's get ready to go. Let's get some music ready. All right, let's just, it's a little early, but let's just do it to clear war. End the threat for containment. We're gonna contain this hive mind. Take as much of it out as possible. It's quite big though, so we might hit war exhaustion before we can. Defensive war protocols. We will feed on your flesh, human. We will savor the taste. I mean, they're inferior, they're pathetic tech. We should be, this should be no brainer. It's just about covering all our bases at the same time. All right, into Escont, please. Make sure nothing comes out and hits us out of Ashamax. And we have our scientist that's gonna be leading or following as well. Now we need a scientist to be taken off this. To be put on for now. All right, so I need to swap these around, sorry. Beat this guy.
Okay, so that's now, she's now able to uh, speed up the engineering. He's going to be working on things that might end up coming up in uh, society. Mm -hmm. And then we have a scientist available to go on to the Agatha Daemon. Drusus Secundius, uh, Secundinius, really. And he's going to follow mm -hmm. in and find debris and things like that. All right. Gonna sit in and watch the warp, New or at least the hyperdrive. Discovered. Jump. Boom. Yeah, it does make that little thing. So I do think uh, Arx Aaron has done that. All right, let's go. Engaging hostile station. All right, no problem at all. I love that. Look at this at the back here. Along with the battleship, we just have a wall of uh, velites firing their nukes. That's some crazy noise as well going on out of them. Excellent. I'm gonna have to actually just lead with the battleship rather than keep migrating these guys. It's kind of a mistake to keep doing that. There we go. All right, battleship is off, and the others are following. What are these things? Oh, it must be the strike craft that comes out of this. Yeah. Ha, they're just kind of like following it along. They haven't actually come back into it yet. It's like, wait for us. There we go. All right, so we're just going to queue that up then. They're going to do their thing pretty standard. Hopefully, nothing too crazy is going to encounter them. I'll keep an eye on them in the background. So, what do we want down here on Terra? Slave processing facility. Do we have many slaves? I think this is a good place to have our refineries and things. So, what else do we need or do we want? Crystal mines. Let's get more. I don't know if we need them, but we also get alloys out of them, so it's kind of cool. Let's just check. So what are we not making? Maybe more exotic gases yet again for further tech later on. Uh, yeah. Sure. Oh, no, no, no. Admin cap. Yeah. All right, cool. Archaeological skill plus two for all scientists. Yes. Damn, that's the point defense. I need the. I need. Well, we won't be able to use it for a while, actually. But I need. I kind of need that tech. Oh, the other one was rare though, so it makes me feel like we won't get it as often. So let's try that now. At least we'll get to use that immediately. I suppose that's the, the real important thing. All right, we're into this other system now. So we're just gonna go system by system. As you can see, we're taking these systems. We're going to be increasing that Empire Sprawl all the time now. And the only world we have to actually offset that as a world itself would be um, Augusta. Which is going to get its planetary shield generator next as well. And if this world goes offline, you take such a massive hit to your economy because of the... Uh, what is that, by the way? Oh yeah, the Tales of Enlightenment. Nice. All right, the territory grows, the borders expand. What the hell is this? Oh, it's the Vazarin hegemony. They're hitting the Tyrene Republic again. And they just hit them, and they're out. Hmm. New it does not bode well, discovered. but their numbers do. We have 13K strength, so if we do end up hitting them, contacting them, they might, might not be so bad. No debris for us to get just yet. Uh, so this is the ruins in Brigantium. The discovery of a partially preserved databank in a hardened military bunker has revealed the sad fate of Colonia Brigantium III. Faced with a general economic collapse, which would have led to the end of their anti-UFO measures, the rulers of Colonia Brigantium III activated their ultimate shield. However, this was not a shield to protect Colonia Brigantium III, rather it was a complete nuclear annihilation of the population and infrastructure to ensure neither could be taken by alien invaders. The decision was apparently spurred on by the discovery of an alien signal coming from Colonia Brigantium 1. Society research gained 500. Colonia Brigantium 1 
adds an anomaly. Ah. Here it is. So an alien signal was coming from there, and that meant this, this entire planet basically killed themselves to prevent being taken by it. Well, we're gonna colonize it, recolonize it now, and then we can turn it into a Gaia world. And then also name it Ramus. Mineral purification hubs, swarm missiles. Let's go with the crystal forge blading. Something to last a while. That was a pretty cool. I like that story. That was a good one. Colony. New technology discovered. Food processing centers, industrial subsidies, forge. Oh yeah, the Ministry of Production. We read this before. Paradise Dome. We don't really need it, honestly, because we have ideal worlds. Trading paradigm unlocks innovation and progress trade policy. No, that's okay. Let's go with this. And then she's got more research if we wanted. Improved reactors, advanced fire control systems. Let's go with research station output. Severely cheaper than it should be. Um, the homeworld of the Astonine. The fight for freedom. According to the records stored in the basement computers, the government and the rebels fought. For quite a long time on this planet, the rebels built a permanent residence on a corner of the star system to prepare for prolonged battles using most of their resources. We want freedom, we want truth, not just holograms, shouted their slogan. Or shouting their slogan, the rebels fought hundreds of battles against the government forces, but eventually they ran out of resources, and being unable to keep up with the advanced holographic technologies didn't help. 20 years after the war began, the rebels were finally eliminated by the government's fleet. This is the last information we can get. We need to look for the basement to find more details. So that habitat was originally owned by the rebels. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So new Astania, this habitat was a launch pad for them to go do frequent invasions. That's pretty cool. All right, we're back here now. Star base of 1.4K in this awesome looking system. A micro quasar. And I do believe, is this the system? It might not be actually. One of these, uh, it's a bit further in, I think. There's like a pulsar, that's it, it's this one. Study the compact star. So I look forward now that our scientists can finally start catching up and doing all these things. And there is a complete uh, evasion is reduced, disengagement chance is reduced, so you would not want to fight people up here. God, that looks so cool. And then the other star in the distance as well. Right, we haven't lost any ships so far, so that's all good. Let's keep moving our fleet. Level 3 out of its mind. It's our battleship, I should say. The Augusta. Yep, it's already got its orders. Nothing crazy so far then. So do we need this star base would be a question. So we can look to destroy it. I think we might dismantle it. Finding the truth. A thorough investigation of Colonia Brigantium 1 has revealed absolutely nothing related to aliens. Either there was never an alien signal originating here, or whatever caused it left without any traces. However, the close inspection of Brigantium 1 has revealed some minerals. That is curious. That is so curious, because it's like, oh yeah, shit, did... Was there a signal? Or if there wasn't a signal, did they just kill themselves basically for nothing? Both outcomes are very interesting, I think. Uh, all right, well, we send this guy up there and get those minerals. Our recycling campaign has ended. Another thousand energy. Absolutely. Could use exotic gases as fuel, giving us a sublight speed modifier of 15%. Yeah, let's do that. Speed us up. Shield boost. Yeah, let's do that as well. We can afford it. How many moats do we have? 600? Let's activate all these then. So that's going to give us uh, kinetic weapon damage, explosive damage, and armor hit points. And I think it actually does increase the numbers of your fleet. You actually see it. We'll see it when we maybe when we get out of here uh, a bit more clearly, because our numbers have kind of come down since we went in here. Hey, look who it is! Look who it is! It's your boy, Tyrene Republic. They're on the way. I love to see it. Oh, I don't know now. I haven't read the votes, obviously, but hopefully, uh, I don't know. Maybe they're earning it. Now, is this going to give us the territory? That's really what I want to find out. Because if not, they're getting their asses integrated. <laughs> Big time.
They're gonna hit that right before us, it seems. But it's cool to see us both here together, you know, the two fleets kind of coordinated, linking up like this. Love to see it. Okay, we do have a lot of scientists not doing anything. I'll pay attention in a second. Just want to see who this goes to. See their point defense is just taking that out, which is nice. We're lending a hand. You're damn right it went to the Roman Empire. Okay, cool. Let's see. Scientist uh, over here not doing anything. Level 6, out of her mind. Septimia Armenius. So yeah, we've had her for quite a while. She's 88. She would be pretty suitable to... You know what? She could probably sneak in and do a little uh, research right now. No way to reach this project. Are you kidding me? Oh, because of this. Is it? You don't have to go that way, though. You could have just went this way. <laughs> I don't know why she wants to go through the area with the shardlings. There we go. So she can start getting that stuff on the other New side here. Technology discovered. Research station output, zero point power. Artisan output, let's go with that for now. What did we just get? Research, okay, cool. Resolution was passed. That's, an, that's a really good one for us. Um... That was collective waste management, right? Yes. So, yep, happy about that. Um, next one up could be buzzword standardization, which I'm happy to have to support. We want to get that up before relocating the, uh, the galactic market. What about this one? Star yep, absolutely. Weight from tech, research station output, planet sensors, support that. Great. Actually, you know what? I, I kind of support that more than I support this. So now that one's on top and that'll hopefully go through. We are second in the galactic community right now. Feels good, man. Feels Roman, man. All right, so let's just fix these scientists really quickly. You're not doing anything. He's level five. He gained a lot. Oh, no. Well, I can't remember, actually. I think he was level three before we, when we put him out here, but I could be wrong. Huh, I don't know what we need him to do. Tiberium has a scientist uh, assisting research. Saul doesn't. We could assist research out here. It would help a little bit. What is going on? Oh, it's the shields. The shield. Oh, I didn't realize you could see it. Oh, that is cool. It looks really cool as well. Like, it has that effect where you see only on the edges. Oh, that's really, really neat. I've never seen that. I've never seen that. I don't know if that's part of the mod or not. The, the building's not modded, but that's a really cool effect if they added that in. Um... Yeah, you stay out there, you're needed. And you? Oh, he made it! Oh, wow, there's a, a wormhole here. Explore that, and then survey. So this is the guy that we made it with a subspace jump. Dacorite are actually Hostile taking territories here. Range. There's two Leviathans out here. This might be kind of cool to go out here and get some trophies. And that leads to all the way down into the Thogan Emergence. And they are getting destroyed by the Order of the Enlightenment right now. Yeah, that's not looking good. All of this is owned by Order of Enlightenment. Wow. All right, so did it just say we saw hostile fleets? We did. Okay, here we go. What do we got? A s a not bad, actually. I thought it'd be a lot easier than that. 8.4k. And they have their own little star base here. Not very strong, but I'm not afraid. We're going to go straight in. We want to catch them as best we can. We're on the way right now. Let's go with my favorite track. Look at that. What an armada. And we do still have the, the raiders in the fleet. I know some people are saying, like, they're right there. That they're probably technologically holding us back. But it's cool, man. <laughs> it's cool. Let's just keep them for a while. Oh, they're trying to get to Lazon. All right, we've just arrived. Let's intercept as best we can. We've got to go as quickly as possible. A straight line. Construction online. In fact, now I'm going to give the order to Titus Ospius to just rush forward. He has to lock these guys down. We're going to see him pull ahead. Just lock them down. Don't let them out of our snare, Titus Ospius. Come on. Get that range. Come on. Engaging hostile yes. Fleet. Holy shit. <laughs> a huge 
vast load of missiles came our way, it felt like. Although I'm not seeing any. Yeah, I am seeing missiles there, but none in their actual fleet. These are Lambada class. Do they have anything other than Lambada, I wonder? It's all Lambada, but it looks like they have two types of fleet, and the other one's using point defenses and nukes. Let's slow it down. I didn't save it before, so I won't be able to use cinematics. We'll just cinematic it like this. The main fleet's catching up now. The battleship's gonna start firing its uh, arc emitter. Point defense is doing work. Those red lasers that are coming out like that are point defenses. Is that that's coming from them though? They're firing on missiles. Oh, they're firing on our little strike craft that are coming in. Two Corvettes have gone down. Now, I really want to see, are these the, these look like they might be the crystal, oh no, we don't, have I used them yet? Actually, no, I haven't used them yet, the crystal throwers. There could be all crazy types of weaponry coming from this thing I'm not familiar with yet. It looks like it might be the kinetic batteries, those long kind of trails. Just trying to think. Antimatter missiles, of course. The Hastati are using auto cannons. Yeah, yeah. Leaf combat's not not going our way, apparently. But I feel like we will be killing, like we should be killing more than they are. Our hit ratio is certainly way higher, 78, 76, and 60, whereas theirs is 55 just overall. We've done way more damage to their shields, done a little bit of damage to their armor. We're very efficient with their hulls, 136% efficient with their shields. Not winning as, as like, you know, well as I thought we would. They have 70 Corvettes. It might just be, again, this volume, this numbers game that they're playing with us. Their numbers are just so high. There's just so many ships for us to take out. We're climbing, though, overall. Our battleship is, like... Oh, look at that. What a moment. Holy crap. That Corvette is f done for. But our battleship is totally fine. It hasn't taken any hits yet. I was worried that Corvettes would swarm the crap out of us. Is there any ships hanging back? No, it's just making sure. Our nukes are sitting back. They're firing, like, out of these ships. You can just see their little arcs. So the Velites are just kind of chilling back, but definitely in range, doing their thing. Definitely be reading the combat report after this. This is our biggest battle yet. Like, let's put on some battle music. There's barely anything left of them now. Huge amounts of space debris has been left over as well. And that is it. So let's check out what just happened. All right, so we lost two Corvettes and four on the fleet that we used to hold them down. So Titus Ospius was technically the one in charge of that because he's the first engaged. Uh, and they lost seven, one, three, and one. So out of the 75 ships, we only killed 10% of them. So they actually still have quite a lot. So we have to keep up the momentum. Now I might send uh, this fleet back. And they can go heal up. Whereas the rest of our fleet is largely untouched. They can keep going and we'll just replenish on the go. Uh, but yeah, that should really be this system for us then, no problem. Titus Ospius taking out the swarm, no big deal. And what a legend, just pinning them down. You know, the fleets are going together, you can imagine Titus Ospius just being like, you know, <laughs> it's a bit ridiculous, but like hand on the throttle almost, even though it's like his entire fleet. But like just looking from his command, uh, I don't know, what would you call it, deck, I suppose. Looking in the distance and just seeing that they're gonna get away, you know, and he has to make a call, and he's like, gives the order, it's like, we're gonna abandon 
our fleet. We're gonna push forward, rush forward, and they're like, sir, but like, there's like a hundred ships, you know? There's only 20 for his fleet. And he's like, well, we have to do it to tie them down. We just need to hold them long enough to bring up Classes 1. And that is what he did, and a couple of those Corvettes went down. But I could totally see that being like an awesome movie moment. <laughs> So we can see the. this is definitely our point defenses, right? Yeah, those are the point defense destroyers, which should be just like annihilating all the missiles that come out. It should be anyway. So I'm seeing a few of them hit though. It might be due to the proximity of how close we are. These guys stay so far back. All right, nice, good job. So now we have another wormhole. So we can get our boy uh, Drusus Akun uh, Secundinius to go explore that. I'm just curious to know where that goes. Oh, we need a construction ship out here as well to start building on these places. Yeah, they've got a bit of a distance to go. Alright, great. Um, I think we'll have to leave it there. We've gone on quite a long time, so the war seems like it's gonna go pretty well. Uh, and at the moment, we've won our first battle. They have 32% war exhaustion. Our goal is to completely eradicate them, essentially. Uh, and then we are going to be wrapping around the Site 10667 override. Not saying we're going to go to war with them immediately or anything, but if we have to, if they want to fight us, we have a way in. Uh, so that would at least help us out there. But yeah, pretty successful so far. I was a bit worried when we saw the initial fleet combat status. But it just shows you they have just so many ships. Um that they were kind of overwhelming us a little bit at first because we just had to fight so many. But as their numbers just started to dwindle, we, we pulled it back. Alrighty, um, I'll catch up on the different planets and things after that. Thank you guys again very much for the support, very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.